everyone, my name is Claire Barber and I'm hoping that I can really quickly show you a few of the awesome features and resources available to you in the Active Inspire software so that you can see for yourselves why it is such a popular software with teachers across Australia. I apologise that I'm talking fast. I want to show as many as I can in the 10 minutes that I've given myself to show you. Okay, so let's start by um, looking at the fact that I'm actually recording this using a tool from our software called the screen recorder. We've got a full screen or an area screen so you can trim off and show just one part of the screen if you wanted to. Um, where the screen recorder was quite useful in the classroom, uh, well for me, when I found, was for formative assessment purposes. So I would have a little activity at the board the group of students would be working on it and I would have the screen recorder turned on. It records their voices, it records the interactions um, and movements of things on the screen so I could capture their thought processes and working out and things like that. Um, so it was really awesome for that. Let me take you into the resource library. Um, I'm going to start with the activities. So the resource library is absolutely jam-packed full of loads of different kinds of resources, whether they're text files, images, backgrounds, um, sound files, or these pages, which are ready-made interactive activities. Um, they generally tend to be for fairly standard resources that are used globally, really, in a classroom. So you know, most people would use a hundreds um, grid in their class or a hundreds square. Um, I'm talking most primary school people here or a maths teacher. Um, what I like about them is they've done the hard work for you. So you can see how the squares are already semi-translucent, they already snap into place, um, or they've already used sneaky little tools like Magic Ink which is a tool that we have in our software that um, sees through layers. Our software works um, in four layers. And it allows us to do things like this. So we can see um, through there, we can move these around the screen. Um, these were really good for things like, tell me what's one more, what's one less, what's 10 more, what's 10 less, um, what did I add to this number to get this number, and so on and so forth. The great thing about the resource um, activity resources is that mostly they have notes in the notes browser to explain how to use features of them, um, especially for those um, activities where that might not be abundantly clear. Um, you can also add your own notes as a teacher to your um, lessons. So if I go back to this page, for instance, and I go into my notes browser, I can add um, key questions or comments to the class or anything like that. And as soon as I click out of there, you'll see I now have a sticky note at the top. So that's a really nice way that you can either communicate with yourself so that you don't forget what it was you were intending from that page or with the students if you're going to leave them up there um, with an activity at the panel. Okay, um, resource library, that's what we were doing. Let me pop to a new page. Um, I'm going to scroll down to the subjects folder. And as you can see here, we have folder upon folder of resources absolutely jam-packed. Let me take you into the mathematics. Um, any maths teacher or certainly most primary teachers I know, this folder here is very dear to your heart, place value, seems to be the bane of our lives. Um, you've got your base 10 blocks, you've got your number arrows, um, so that you can be making use, simply pulling on the resources as you need them, um, like so. We've got, just delete those, pop back up into my passion which was teaching writing uh, so we're going to go to the storytelling folder and you can see here that oops that we've got 
folder upon folder absolutely jam-packed full of resources that might be involved in the retelling of those stories or the adaptation of those stories in writing lessons. Um, I'm going to grab out Jack and the Beanstalk. That's one of my favourites because I like doing silly voices. Oops, come here giant. Now if I was on the panel in front of you I could just pinch and zoom the giant to make him bigger or smaller but I'm on a mouse pad so apologies that I can't show you that in person. Here's Jack. Um, that's not the right Jack to use actually. Let's use that one going down the beanstalk. I'm going to show you another tool that was a favorite of mine to use in the classroom. It's really super useful for capturing um, kids thoughts, ideas, um, learning. It's the sound recorder. So I hit go. Oh man, I hope I can get away fast enough. As soon as I hit stop, there it is on the page. Oh man, I hope I can get away fast enough. And we can also then do sneaky little things like this and attach the file to the character. I'll just make that invisible and group it to him. So that no matter where I move Jack, that sound file moves with him and will play. Oh man, I hope I can get away fast enough. Okay, now um, let me move on to show you this little example here. I'll just pop back to the beginning of that. There we go, that's the plan. Uh, this was a unit of work I did with my year four class. We were doing, um, oh, they were year three and four actually, we were doing narratives with a fairy tale unit and we were creating and making up our own fairy tale basically. So we had the plan there. I printed that off. You can print easily enough. Here we go. Print. So I sent off the blank plan to the printer. The kids um, used that in their books to create their own fairy tale narrative and we did one collectively as a class. Um, so the kids have, this was a lot of work before we got to this stage, of course, a lot of reworking, but they many years ago before you or I added their own voices, as you can hear there. They've also done some problem solving and made use of um, something here called the camera tool uh, which is a bit like a snipping tool they use the point to point to trace around this character here um, we had a knight with two legs but when he had two legs it didn't look like he was sitting on the horse so they used the camera tool you can see they were a bit rushed doing it around here and they cut out the knight and cut off one of his legs so that when they sat him on the horse it made it look like he was riding the horse so that was something that they problem solved together there um, and you can see that um, the story goes on I'm a little bit embarrassed because this was pre the days when I knew about doing proper image searches but anyway we live and learn um, and where we went with this story was that we ended up using the same screen recorder that I'm using now the kids read the story, moved the character um, or the characters in the story and turned the pages and we ended up with a moving book movie at the end of it which um, they loved. So that's an option. Um, we also have in the resource library, turn another page just to showcase these, because um, the software was uh, originally British, I'm sorry, that's my dog panting, I'll just move her off my knee. Um, we have a load of Australian resources that we've compiled and New Zealand resources, but obviously we're interested in the, here we go, Australian ones. Um, so resources on Anzac Day, resources on Australian money so that we can pull on and use the money as we need to um, and it's really easy to create um, your own activities 
using features. We've also got features like, if I can right click properly, which I'm struggling to do at the moment for some reason, drag a copy. Now, if you're a smart notebook user, you will know this is clone on drag and you have endless supplies. So you can then create things like this. Oops, let's see where I was having a little practice run before. Um, where you can drag up whatever you need to on the screen. That's just simply a little bit of text and um, an image there. I think I forgot to showcase another tool before, so I'll do that now, um, a tool called Handwriting Recognition. So if you want to compile this ad hoc at the board, um, but you fear your writing is ever so slightly messy, um, you can use handwriting recognition. Sorry, I'm using my mouse pad. There we go. It's pretty good recognition. Now it's defaulted to the default text there, but um, it will use the last size style color of font that you use because I haven't selected or used any font on here today on this flip chart um, let's show you what I mean by that there we go so that's the last used style of font that's what I actually meant so it's pretty good um, and it's a, you can write whole sentences, you can change the conversion time if it's converting too fast or too slow, you just pop into the settings to do that um, down there. Okay, um, now we were talking about smart notebook files, whoops, smart notebook files if you're a user of smart notebook, um, the good news is you can import, whoops, where are we, file, import smart notebook you can import smart notebook files uh, let's use nouns and verbs and make use of them so here's one I already had and I can manipulate change edit maybe that's verbs or whatever make whatever changes I need to make. I'll just convert that because it's not verbs. Um, you can also make use of some of the Active Inspire tools. Let me just make sure that that text is well and truly at the back and I'll just lock it down. Um, this is just to show you how you can manipulate um, resources even if um, they've been created in Smart Notebook. You can still make changes and you can use some of our cool tools to do this. I'll just do it with these two. I'll bring these to the front layer because it's really easy to bring that onto the front layer too while I think of it. Bring to the front. Um, it's really easy to make use of Magic Ink. Let me go to my Magic Revealers or my Magic Ink. So as you can see, Magic Ink lets us see through things. You can probably guess where I'm going with that because you saw me make those clouds um, top layer at the click of a button. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to paste it. So I'm just going to control V there. And basically I can now use that to see through those clouds. Um, so you can make use of Active Inspire tools on top of your old smart notebook tools. Um, in the software, just to really briefly mention it, because it is such a comprehensive software, now I'm not saying every man and their dog or every teacher and their student goes in and makes use of the actions or the properties, but just so that you're aware, Active Inspire does have 
actions and properties. So you can make things um, appear or disappear or do whatever you like. So for example, a really common action is hidden. Another way I could have seen behind that cloud in a, in a cute, quick, easy to set up way is to set the action hidden. And then it toggles the cloud on and off. So you can see there there's gazillions of actions that you can set. So when I um, said earlier that Active Inspire will do anything you want it to do, you actually can do anything you want to do in Active Inspire. We also have restrictors um, in the software in our properties. So you can change the properties of everything, as you can see in this browser here. And again, not everybody makes use of these, but just so that you are aware, you can actually change things here. So if I have selected this and I've changed it to only move horizontally, let me just check that that held. No, it didn't. I'm glad I checked. Can move horizontally. Um, now, when I go to pull this, it won't pull all around the page like it did before. It'll only move in the horizontal position. So this is quite good when you've got limited space on your page and you want something to pull in in a certain area. So as you can see, it's a really comprehensive software. It's got loads of resources. It's got loads of options for zhuzhing, as I call it, if you want to zhuzh. You can import your old smart notebook files if you want to. You can import um, various other files. Now, I'm on my Mac, which only also lets me import PDFs, but Windows machines, uh, depending on what version of software you're running, uh, and by software I mean Microsoft software, you can import PowerPoints. I don't tend to encourage people to do that so much because, I mean, importing PDFs, it's almost like a second step of unnecessariness because nowadays PDFs have annotation tools in them. It's only if you're wanting to use some of these cooler features like making things disappear to reveal or making um, things appear from underneath. If you want to add that level of interactivity, um, you might import your PDF or your PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to stop talking. I've probably talked too long. Hopefully you have enough of an overview to see that um, there are quite a few reasons uh, that Active Inspire is a really popular software. Um, I'll finish by saying that um, we have a YouTube channel where you can, it's YouTube is simply Promethean ANZ, if you Google that. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see Active Inspire tutorials. So there's loads of tutorials in there um, on how to do things. There's also webinars. Um, there's half a dozen webinars um, looking at different things um, that you can use Active Inspire for in the classroom, all tailored to the Australian and New Zealand curriculums, um, as opposed to the UK. Promethean UKI, that's an awesome YouTube channel where you can go to learn loads as well.